July is hard work, but it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of benefits to it. I, I, I catch myself cause I, sometimes I'll get down. I'm like, gosh, this is like really hard. Like, and then I think about, you know, I used to be a farmer. I was an agricultural worker for mm. almost eight years. And I think, yeah, that's hard work. You yeah, know, yeah, picking yeah. vegetables all day. <laughs> like people who work in, you know, factories, like that's hard work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's hard elements of it, but yeah, the promotion, fortunately I've been able to back off from a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Kip, my co-director for Cowspears and What the Health, he did a lot of the promotion because he's the face of the film and I get to be behind the scenes. Um, Running for Good, we did some promotion and Fiona again is the face of that film. So, Mm -hmm. um, And then Hunger for Justice, the new film, John Lewis, my co-director, he's going to be the face of it. So I get to take (laughs) a back seat. You really like you're really like, will we ever see a, a Keegan is the face of the film? I, uh, you know, I, I played with the idea very briefly because I thought, oh, well, you know, like I know about this subject and I could be the face of it. But now I'm way more comfortable behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's kind of like that's really kind of where you sit. Right. Isn't it like that's that's how also knowing you and your personality it kind of feels like even though I would love to see uh, it's all about Keegan movie. I be. Mean, I'll be I'll be all for it. So will Miguel. So will Sparky. <laughs> if well, it ever thanks. happens, we'll be. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're your biggest fans. We're your biggest fans. So, yeah, you know, well, thanks. It would be. Yeah. It would be really cool. Um, no, but I'm really looking forward. Also, what you just said about hip hop and uh, and music, I think is so interesting because you know I really love hip hop and I, I really agree with you that there is such strong messages, and that you reach you can reach so many you know young kids as well um, with yeah with music you know i think it's such a yeah it's such an amazing because how is that going like is that also are you also there on a tight budget does you do you also need to make this movie fast like how how is that how is that going for you now yes i'm really fortunate that the budget has been able to grow you know the success Mm -hmm. of my films has made it easier to fund films Mm -hmm. um so this this film is the biggest budget i've ever worked on but we went with had like a crew of seven people working on the film. Hmm. And after six months of shooting, we went down to just John and I, like it's just <laughs> the two of us because yeah. I find that that's the easiest way to work. It's the cheapest way to work. And you know, if we can save money, mm-hmm. we're, we're going to save money everywhere we can there. I wanted to have this film done. Um, but unfortunately family circumstances, um, mm-hmm. prevented me from, from working on the film for almost five months this year. Mm-hmm. And, um, so this we're behind schedule, mm-hmm. but we should have it done really soon. Um, hopefully my, my hope is to have it out late spring mm-hmm. 2020, but it could be summer or fall. We'll, we'll see. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, you know, again, the, the biggest struggle with making this film is getting access to artists. You know, you have yeah. A-list artists who are vegan or talking about veganism or talking mm-hmm. about plant-based diet or whatever it is, but they all have gatekeepers and managers and assistants that you have to get through. And so that's yeah. like, the biggest challenge making this film for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's shaping up to be really, You're not going to have really Leo fun. ring them all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I wish. If only you I could wish. just like get Re- Leo to ring them all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, and, of, and they have schedules too, of course, right? Like mm-hmm. when you have to like figure, like get everybody in. I would say that that would be, yeah, super it's good. a bit challenge. But nonetheless, yeah. I mean, we, we the film has we've shot over a hundred interviews. I wow. mean, it is a massive, massive film, and it's everything too. Where it's it's not just. You know, it's not just like food deserts, which is a lot of people are aware of in the United States. You know, people don't have access to healthy foods, but it's, you know, why are there food deserts? You know, what's the role that pharmaceutical plays into it? What is the role of environmental racism? You know, you have communities of color who's, who have factory farms put in their communities because these industries realize that these people are disenfranchised or underrepresented in government. So they don't have the same sort of voice and therefore don't have the same sort of power Mm -hmm. um, or aren't given the same sort of power. And so we're dealing with those aspects. We're dealing with, you know, everything in comparisons to, you know, the media focuses on gun violence in inner cities and low income communities and ignores the health crisis when, you know, 10 Mm. to a hundred times more people are dying from preventable diseases than they are from gun violence or Mm -hmm. just violence in general. Yeah. And yet the media doesn't talk about that. And then you just look, well, who's funding the media? It's like, who's paying yeah. for the advertisements? Oh, it's all fast food and pharmaceuticals. Mm. So how could they possibly talk about it? So it, it's just that importance. And again, the, this film goes so deep. You know, Cowspiracy is an investigative film. What the hell is an investigative film? This film goes really deep. Mm-hmm. And the, the mm-hmm. five months that I wasn't working on the film 
actively shooting. I was doing research and we've uncovered just some yeah. really <laughs> powerful and really damning information. So it's, it's going to be a film that shakes people up. Yeah. Wow. And, and then you're working with John, like, is that a really different dynamic than what you were doing with Kip? Like when you are working together, is it, is it very different? You know, it's interesting. It, there's a lot of similarities. John and I get along really well. I'd say John's one of my best friends. Um, we, we have such different backgrounds and, and, and yet find commonality in so many different things. Hmm. Um, John's also a super creative guy. And so it's, it's that balance of, you know, having creative ideas and looking at things, but, but, you know, this is John's first film. And so he's very, you know, upfront about that. Like, Hey, this is my first time directing. So he's totally open to learning and, and mm-hmm. using, utilizing my experiences. So it's been a really great process. Again, oh, I, cool. I feel super fortunate to have, be able to work with both these guys. Mm-hmm. And did you just know John from Instagram? Like, or like, did you guys, did, were you guys already friends before doing this project or? Uh, we met years ago, probably three, four years ago at a, um, a green festival. John was speaking at a oh, festival cool. that I was speaking at and we just started talking. He came over to the Cowspiracy booth and I was like, oh, badass vegan. He's like, oh, you know who I am? I was like, yeah, sure, <laughs> there you are. And so we started talking and then, um, like six months later we were at another green event and I asked him, I said, Hey, you have a minute. Like, I'd like to talk about films. And we were sitting, we were talking about films and I was looking for another, I actually wanted him to get involved in running for good. Mm. And then I was telling about some other ideas and we were just talking about like our love for hip hop. John's a huge hip hop head. Mm-hmm. And, and we started talking about this idea about doing like a vegan hip hop documentary. And from that, it evolved into something so much bigger than just vegan hip hop. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a massive, massive film. Um, so cool. Yeah, super fortunate. And, but it did. It took us two years from the first time we started talking about it to get funding mm-hmm. and then yeah. been shooting for two years. So. Yeah. Wow. And do you think you'll be like making movies forever? Is this something that you want to keep doing for, for another 8, 10, 20, 30 years? Or like how yeah, do you see a, that? That's a great question. Um, after every time I finish a film, I say <laughs> I'm never doing this again. <laughs> but I, I'm done. I've already... I've already started another film. So it's like when we were making What the <laughs> Health, I started shooting Running for Good before yeah. we were even done. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and then by before I even finished Running for Good, I started shooting Hungry for Justice. Um, it does take a lot out of me. And so I don't know how long I will make films. I don't think I'll continue to make films in the way I have been because mm-hmm. I don't know that it's just sustainable. You know, we talk about sustainability and we have to think about sustainability for ourselves as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I will be involved in films in one way or another forever because they're an incredible tool for influencing change and bringing about a more compassionate world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. And do you, do you feel that like, you know, you've made like so many movies now and like, have you seen yourself also change and develop and grow and, like, have are things different now when you when you do a movie now? Is it different than when you started making yeah, movies? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I'm way less stressed out. When Good. I first started making films, I was so stressed about every shoot because <laughs> you know you just don't know. And then mm-hmm. once you re- learn, you go, oh, okay, like I can relax a little bit. Like I don't have to stress about this, and the anxiety can go away. I'm still super stressed about <laughs> about managing projects, but. Um, yeah, it, it's gotten easier for sure. And I've mm-hmm. also learned to like let go and let other people help me. So I had an incredible composer, Jason Camiolo, who did the score for Running for Good, which I've always done my own scores. So the thought of like handing that over felt really intimidating, but it was amazing to work with somebody who was way more talented than me as a musician. Um, I did all, most of the ad- animations for my films and then working with animators was awesome. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've learned to let go and share and be more collaborative and that's made my life so much easier. Yeah. So that's, that's also really what you've seen change for yourself then, right? In yeah. Your, and do yeah. you have like a coach or a guide or a teacher or someone that like, like when you have raw materials that you show that to them or like, or is that really depending, depending on who you're working with at the time? Yeah, it really depends on who I'm working with at the time. I have some people. I have a, a an executive producer who's been involved in all of my films other than Turlock, my first film, Greg Anzalone. And he's mm. an amazing guy. He's a good friend. And, and I share every project with him. And I bounce ideas off him. Um, he's one of the producers of the Rich Roll podcast. He's just an incredible person. Ah, cool. Uh, and then my partner, Shani. Mm-hmm. She hears all of my ideas. And, and she's a good benchmark of whether it's good or not. And I yeah, I just bounce ideas off people. And so like Kip... 
you know, Anderson, my co-director, Cal Spears, and what the hell, he gets to hear all my ideas. And, and Kip's awesome because he'll shoot something down. Yeah. He's like unafraid to be like, nah, it's a bad idea. Oh, all right. Well, Kip thinks it's a bad idea. Maybe it's not the best <laughs> idea. <laughs> or he'll say, yeah, that's a cool idea for a short film. He's like, I, I don't see that as a feature. So Yeah. It's, and it's so, good yeah. to have these people. I'm sure I'm sure people are, especially when they're close to you, like your wife or Kip or people that you work so closely with, they can be honest as well. Like and yeah. they should be. You know, I think it's yeah. I think exactly. it's so good when because do you feel are you someone who has like always oh, hundreds of ideas and like you're in the movie and then you already see five other movies happening for is that who you are? Totally, a hundred percent. I'm <laughs> Shannon, my partner, was just was just saying that to me. She goes, "I think you need to just choose one thing." Because I was like, "I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and yeah. I think I'll do this." Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I tend to be all over the place, and <laughs> I usually have multiple projects and things that are just totally unrelated to. Like I have a, a camera accessory company, I have a, mm-hmm. a sculpture company, I have a t-shirt company, I have a film company. Yeah. Like I have all these different things that I do that are totally unrelated to each other too, while also <laughs> doing multiple projects within each one of those. So it's it's kind of how my brain works. Yeah, but I guess it's it's good and bad, isn't it? Because it's also, it's bringing you, I think, everything you're doing, you know, because it's coming from like that, like that mind of, of creativity. But then, yeah, it can also be a bit overwhelming, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful curse of just that incessant creativity. I'm very yeah. fortunate for it and I'm, and I'm very grateful for it. But I also only sleep like four hours a night and you can see the bags under my eyes right now because... <laughs> Yeah, I just don't sleep because I'm doing too much and thinking about too much. Yeah. I think I think you live with somebody who's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I do. I do. I do. 5 years. I know. Yeah. I know. I've long years. No, but I mean it's I am and I I also feel uh with you because I think it's also important to let go and um you know, it's, it's, even when you're in amongst of of everything and you're doing so many things, I think it's important. It's definitely important to sleep, Keegan. Like Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's important. Yeah, yoga's helped a lot with that. Yeah, so I do yoga every day. That's been a life changer. Yeah, no, that's really that's really good. And, and and just for a side note, Kip is also a Jeev Mukti yoga teacher, and it's true. It's very it's very cool to uh, for some of the listeners who know that uh, I am, and I'm also I just actually interviewed another Jeev Mukti yoga teacher for the podcast too. So it's pretty cool. It's really I think yoga can be, um, you know, a very strong tool for many people on yeah with which whatever in, in all kinds of you know whatever they do in their life like i think it can make you um yeah just a bit more down to earth yeah. and and in the earth and yeah that's very good well oh one last question i'd like to ask you and i was just asking jess as well because we are recording this right now just before the new year is coming and the last year is ending um, do you have like kind of like like a big wish for yourself and the world for 2020 if if you had any? Um, yeah, I mean, my perpetual wish for the world is for, you know, peace and compassion and mm-hmm. understanding and consciousness. Um, but for on a personal level, probably the same. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want more peace and compassion. I do want peace. And yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, but you know, I'm I'm focusing on really taking care of myself. I've let myself uh, eat poorly, even as a vegan, even mm-hmm. as like more whole foods vegan. I've just kind of let myself go in that respect. So going back to eating cleaner, like an SOS, you know, no salt, oil, or sugar added mm-hmm. to my diet. Um, growing more food again, and yeah, just being outside, you know, connecting with the earth. I think that's the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to. That's really good. And I'm really glad you're saying this because it's such an important thing. And especially uh, lots of people know you, lots of people know your work. And it's good to hear you say these things. It is extremely important to look after yourself and be good to yourself. Because, you know, we all want uh, Keegan to make a lot more movies and get Thanks. really old and gray and, <laughs> and grumpy one day. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old and gray and grumpy already. As it is. As it is. <laughs> I just turned 40, so I know what you're feeling. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Um, Keegan, thank you so very, very, very much for taking the time. And um, I'll make sure that, um, you know, people can find you because, you know, all the different projects that you do. But, you know, also some links to your movies and to Fiona. And, you know, make sure that people can, um, yeah, and and listen to your music. We'll put it all in the notes uh, on this podcast. So thank you so much. much. 
Oh, thank you. And thank you to all the listeners. So this was Keegan in my Vegan Hero series. And remember to be good to yourself, to be good to others, especially the animals. Bye. Go, go, go.